Mind Gap Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Justin, and Doug, well, we're going to get to where Doug is in a second, but joining me in his stead is the one, the only, you remember him from the 400th episode as one of our guests, Mr. Sam Cook. Honored to be here. Thank you for inviting oh, me. We, I'm so honored to have you, Sam. I don't even know. And you got the memo. Sam and I are in... Our uh, our uniforms were in yes. very similar attire. It's the three quarter length baseball tee. Uh, Sam, yours has animal on it. Yes, it does. Oh yeah, Sam's got animal. Mine, a uh, little uh, Hellfire, Hellfire Club, Club. Nice. from uh, Stranger Things. So, uh, if you have a three quarter length baseball tee that has something fun on it, let us know in the comments. What the <laughs> hell does yours say? And why aren't you wearing it right now as you're listening to it? Pause the episode, go put it on, or take your phone with you while you're changing. We won't watch, we promise. And, uh, you know... Uh, 2017 Office Rec League, yeah. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Sam, you... Uh, it was interesting. Like, Doug didn't show up for this, and I, I was like, I don't know where he is. I'm going to call Sam and see if he can fill in. But you said you saw him wandering around. Where did you see him? Where is Doug right now? If it wasn't Doug, it was his doppelganger, okay? okay. Um, so... I just happened to be going for a long run. I was going through the marina. Mm. Lo and behold, who do I see? Scoping out, uh, scoping out slash trying to look like they're not scoping out boats. Mr. Douglas Cochran. He tried to be incognito, glasses. I'm like, no, Doug, come on. Did he have his mind gap shirt on? He always he did. has something on. He did. I, these, it's, that's, that doesn't work. You can't do that when you're going incognito. He tried to you be like, also, oh, I'm just your biggest fan. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Right, yeah. For sure. <laughs> you're also 6'4", bald, <laughs> and uh, very distinctive looking. So, yes. yeah, I, uh, that's not good. So, he was scoping out boats. He was looking at, you think, looking at maybe purchasing a boat? Oh, he definitely wanted the vanity boats, like the speed oh, boats, like the, God, um, those like small little yacht type thingies that zip around. But he's like, oh, no, I'm just casually here looking at, you know, pontoon boats and other stuff that could like double as a property, like trying to get rational with it. I'm like, no, no, pal. No, no, no one just hangs out. No one just chills in the marina, this Doug, is, for this, no reason. Yeah, this is your dirty little secret, Doug. <laughs> well, we're going to have a lot to talk about when Doug gets back because, uh, as everyone knows, uh, Doug says boats are depreciating an asset. Now he is going against his own advice. And that, you know what? That's not practical, Doug. That's not. That's not. not. Unless there's a practical reason that he is trying to be like playing both sides. Ooh. Ooh. That I think, would, I think we might be scratching at a, at a mystery here. Okay. That would, we're pulling at a thread that I don't yeah. know that we want to unravel. That's uh, true. Also, <laughs> that might make a really good Ask Practical Doug segment. Ask Ooh, Practical yeah. Doug why Doug is trying to play both sides of not owning a boat and owning a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, okay. This is, uh, this is a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. But Sam, <laughs> enough about Doug. You are here, and I'm very happy to have you here. And I want to ask you a question, Sam. What is the funniest work experience that you've ever had? Oh, God. So yeah. I work in corporate training, and it's like one foot in training, one foot in HR, and just like all the <laughs> shenanigans people get up to. All yeah. right. So spoiler alert, a lot of adults do stupid things while drunk. So – I work at a giant facility with a bar across a lake, and it was the dead of winter in Chicago, and security in the middle of the night gets a phone call saying somebody fell through the ice, and they're like, oh, shit. So they go out there with their flashlights, and they see a big hole in the ice, and they follow the footprints through the snow into the training center because it's like kind of like a big hotel as well. Yeah. And they follow these sopping wet footprints down the carpeted hallway to this very drunk guy. And they're like, sir, we heard reports about somebody falling through the ice. Do you know anything about that? <laughs> he looks down and he looks up at them and guess what he says? No. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't just guess you're talking about <laughs> don't know, bro. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's weird. I hope you catch the guy. <laughs> good luck. All right. Good night. <laughs> good night. Squish, 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 squish. squish, squish, squish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this was obviously inebriated. Obviously, very. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, did he get? Did in, in an instance like that? Did he get a, a a reprimand or a talking to afterwards? Or was this like, hey, 
Jim, go, you know, sleep it off, and then we won't talk about it tomorrow. Um, it depends on the egregious nature of whatever happens, but typically it's like anywhere from like a small light talking to to a light slap on the wrist to like you're getting fired or possibly even going to jail, depending on what you did. So oh have you <laughs> yeah. ever had any of those like to that level where they're going to jail? Like, have you ever seen uh, someone get whisked away? No, anything, time? anything that was of that nature, I escalated it so quickly to be like, mm, not my job, not getting paid for it. Bye. Right, right. Gotcha. <laughs> you take this legal HR, not my problem. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, people. That's wild. That lie. To pull, here's the thing to have the confidence to think you can pull that lie off. I will give, <laughs> uh, we're going to call him Jim now. I will give Jim 100% credit on that. Like, he just straight face, just commit to the bit. No. Panel of experts. You just got to speak with confidence, man. Absolutely. That's it. <laughs> Did you? So, any other ones that spring to mind for you? I'm trying to think of. Oh, oh, trust me, plenty. I could say off the air, but I'm trying to think of something <laughs> I could say on the air. Um, oh. Uh, um, well, while you're thinking of that, I'll I'll tell. I have not had that none that come to mind that are anything of the level that you're that you're talking about. Um, I will. Well, I know, you know what? I had a really good, I might've told it on the podcast years ago, but I had a really a gross experience that involved uh, my, unfortunately I was the unwilling participant in this experience, but there's a gentleman who used to work at my current company when we were in our old offices and he was, um, Chris. he wasn't the most, it was Chris Bellucci. Yes. <laughs> um, Chris spit in my mouth and that is the <laughs> long and short of the story. <laughs> No, uh, it does involve someone spitting in my mouth. So oh. there's the punchline of the joke. But no, this guy was not the most uh, beloved character in the office. He was the kind of guy who would shuffle around and constantly tell inappropriate jokes. Oh, and one of those. Just like, no, hey, can you just keep moving on? I don't know. Thank you. No, uh, I've definitely talked about this individual before. I don't know if I've shared this specific story, but there was one time. I was sitting at my desk. We at the time we had these cubicles. It wasn't the open open concept that it was. So he was making his way around like the pre the labyrinth that is cubicles. And he would you'd hear him shuffling down the aisle and he would he'd stop at each one and he'd lean on the cubicles and he'd talk to you and then he'd move on and lean on the cubicles. I was working in client service at the time. So if you put your headphones on, he was trained well enough to know that if headphones are on, that means they're busy. Uh, so as he came to client service, people would, you would just see frantically everyone pick their headphones up, call or not. And everyone was on a call. So just headphones went whoosh, almost like, oh, like the, like someone in the th uh, stadium doing a wave. Yeah. It was just headphone, 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 headphone. I missed it. And he got to me oh. and he was like, Hey, Justin, I'm like, Hey, what's going on, bud? And he was talking, talking, and he had been eating something. And so he had like bits of, I don't know, like bagel or cream cheese on the side and mouth was real still breaking it down, you know, Ugh. a lot of sal salivating. And I was sitting there like, uh-huh, oh, uh-huh, looking up at him. And my mouth was opened because, you know, your neck goes up. So he's on the other side of the wall open. looking direct down at you? Down, leaning on it. Oh, yeah, perfect angle, perfect and angle. And he says something that makes him laugh, and he laughs. And as he does that, he spits. Oh. And almost like he was playing Bozo Buckets, oh. right? Like if you're from the Chicagoland area, you're familiar yeah. with Bozo Buckets. And he just, he hit that last bucket and it went right and it hit my tongue. And, and I went, it was one of those where I'm like, if I make this a deal, it's going to extend the amount of time that he's here. So I, and I had a, and another colleague who was like working across the next cubicle over who was watching it and watched it happen. And she said, your face, and for those of you listening to the podcast, jump on YouTube and you can watch the podcast. But she looked at me, she goes, your face went from like, uh-huh, to just, <gasps> like, like yeah, yeah. every the face just like cheeks pulled back, color drained out of your face, and you just I was holding it open because I didn't want to swallow. <sighs> so I just uh huh, but trying to close it a little bit so more spit doesn't come. Yeah, in. yeah. He finally left, and dude, I can't. I I went into the bathroom and just fucking just scrubbed my tongue. It was Ugh. the worst. I'm like I've never been so grossed out in my life. Yeah. So that was hindsight. It's hysterical. Yeah. But. Uh, in the moment, it was one of the worst experiences. But that that might be one of the, in hindsight, one of the funnier, weird yeah. office stories that I have encountered. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so two stories came to mind. Both involve 
borderline biological hazards. Um, <laughs> first was not nearly as bad as yours, but like sure. the cu- they're just like plain white coffee cups. Yeah. And working all day, you get busy and you grab it and just take a swig. And I always have my coffee just black, straight black hot coffee, nothing sure. else. And it was like dairy latte like a man, cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like like latte cowboy. cinnamon, uh, dairy, like all the everything in there that I don't drink. And I take like sure. a chug and just. Oh god! Oh god! Like the who's ever backwash this was is now mingled in my mouth, and like of course I'm catastrophizing. Every just thing that's just disgusting about it. I don't yep. know if I swallowed or if I like was able to run to a sink really close right. by and spit it out. Um, now yeah. I have herpes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the other one was this was years like easily 14, 15 years ago. Um, some dudes from Australia thought it would be like, a, cause the, the training center is set way back in the woods mm-hmm. and they, some dudes thought it would be a hilarious prank on their colleagues, to just like find a dead possum in the woods and throw it under their desk. And so they came in and it was just like a dead possum and they're like, ha ha, we got you. And it's like, no, no, like this, we might have to call hazmat. What are you doing? <laughs> Many questions. One, yeah. how did you guys get it in here? Two, why do you think? Never mind. I've answered that. You're from Australia. That's yeah. just pranks. That's a normal prank in Australia. Those are, those are hijinks. Yeah. yeah, that's just hijinks. It's like putting like Parmesan cheese on the floor. It's just, <laughs> that's what you do in Australia. 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. Oh my god, that's so fucking gross. So did you guys have to call like animal control? Or oh animal yeah, or for sure, for oh, sure. Man. And so like another another biological one um so it's like tradition everybody comes in for training their last day is friday so on thursday they all go out and get annihilated together yeah and they're at the club they're dancing and friday morning the guy teaching the class is like turning up club music and he's like come on if you can dance on thursday night you can dance on friday morning let's have some fun get the energy up and this one young guy oh (laughs) he got a little too excited just started doing a few too many spins in the room and just bolts out the door and just projectile vomits all over the wall and the carpet and it's just like and it's like in this uh airway deficient hallway (laughs) there's like very few vents and breezes (laughs) everybody's sitting there smelling it hung over as hell (laughs) i don't know if you remember that as a kid like the kid would puke in the hall and the janitor would sprinkle that like yeah. dust on it, there. It looked, I swear to God, it was uh, pencil shavings. Yes. I swear to God, that's what it was. It always smelled like pencil. It looked and smelled like pencil shavings. Yeah. Me. So that. But then it was just that over vomit. Plus vomit. Plus everybody's yeah. like oh. hung over breath and farts like in a room. Be- just, yeah. yeah. Just ugh. <laughs> no bueno. It's, it's worth it. That's why I disagree with having parties, corporate parties on Thursdays, because our company <laughs> used to do those when we had Christmas parties. It was always on a Thursday. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah. No one needs this. Uh, half uh, the office was smart and took the next day off, and the that, other half was miserable. Or have everybody come in Thursday for the party and have Friday as a holiday, so everybody gets the next day sure. off. Sure, yes. Perfect, because nobody's going to yes. come in on a Friday party with, with no. holiday. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's disgusting. Uh, I got one more from it. Again, this one's not that intense or, or disgusting. I always just found it funny. So uh, early, early working career, I worked at the container store, right? Oh, like, I remember. Like right out of college, worked at the container store. And uh, our buddy who we've had on the podcast before, Milos, worked at the container store as yeah. well. And uh, legend has it he was born in the stockroom of the Schomburg container store. <laughs> that is – that's the myth that surrounds him. I don't know if it's true. I haven't seen the birth certificate. Born or conceived. But <clears throat> maybe both. Yeah. I heard the gestation period for Serbians is like 24 hours. <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Again, I'm not a science man. Um, but no, he uh, – so there was – he loved – he was he, – he reveled when a new person came on. And this is where I, I took this and, and picked up the torch and ran with it. Uh, but one of the best things he taught me was – we had these little boxes. Uh, they were clear boxes, and they were just about the size to like put like a quarter in, like that much diameter, right? Uh, but they were square, and they came in all different colors. And when people came in to buy them, side tangent, it was it was people were putting drugs into them. That was that's the only reason that you buy these boxes. They were the perfect size. Sure. So like here's you know whatever here's an ounce. They're the box equivalent of the t- little Ziploc baggie. That's exactly it. This is for the higher end people that when you want to spend two dollars on a little bit. But yeah, so they were called AMAC boxes. It was just the name AMAC boxes. So Milos would t- train new people. He would tell them he was like, and he goes, so this is the uh, you know the the gift packaging aisle. He goes, this is this 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 and this. He goes, these are uh, AMAC boxes. They're very popular. 
and uh, if he if they didn't prompt the question, he would somehow work it. And he goes, and so he goes something you you will need to know. Um, the uh, the the higher ups are very um, they want to honor the man, so the the uh, higher ups are, are insistent that we relay this information. The reason they're called that is there was this uh, duke who used to come over all the time from the UK, um, Sir Walter Amac, and he <laughs> love this and he loved these boxes. Like he took them home all the time. He gave them as gifts. For some reason, these were just his favorite boxes. And every time he came here, uh, or, or to the the DFW store, the Dallas Fort Worth store, which is the headquarters store, he would he would always go and just clean them out of these Amac boxes. Well, one day he was in there buying these boxes, and he had a heart attack, and he died in the aisle, and so. Is an in honor of him because he was such good friends with the founders at the time who were still at that store. They decided to call these boxes the the Amac boxes after Sir Walter Amac, and uh, you know, and he would add flourishes here and there. And then the best was when we turned the new employee loose after they had been fully trained up. We would kind of like tail them, and when they had a client that was going near there, and on more than one occasion, they told customers. The story of the, Sir Walter, Sir Walter Amac, Amac. because yeah. they were just like, oh, fun fact about these. And they would just <laughs> tell it. And so there are people out there who have this completely nonsense story of a man who doesn't exist about boxes that did not need a backstory to them at all. And it's it. something about it, like the innocent part of it warms my heart. I yeah. just love that. I, I love I see. I personally hate pranks, but I love jokes like that because there's no harm. Right. There's there's, exactly. there's like nobody's the butt of the joke. Um, no. It's just why like that snl sketch like in a word chaos that's why yeah. i just because <laughs> just because because you know what I yeah. like some people want to watch the world burn yeah <laughs> oh my god that's fucking amazing so uh you know what uh in the comments uh in in whatever you're listening to on youtube anywhere let us know uh it, what what's the craziest or funniest or goofiest or silliest or whatever work story that you guys have we are dying to know. that's a few of ours i know doug has buckets of stories from the hotel that he'd be telling if he weren't out shopping for a boat right now mm -hmm. you can also uh you know like you said watch us on youtube subscribe to us there uh on uh, apple podcast anywhere where you can get podcasts uh spotify we're on all those subscribe to us wherever you would like to and then also if you want to hang out with the community that we've built you can join our discord we have a great discord it's a small but mighty community and on there we've got uh, different channels and you can we've got a work 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 channel and in that channel, you can tell stories about, uh, you know, what's going on with work, funny stories from work, et cetera. It's a real cool community. Check us out on Discord. And then redbubble.com slash mindgappodcast. Uh, you can get some of our merch there. And uh, you know what? Hey, you got uh, some holidays coming up, a couple months. Get get those gifts ahead of time. Like Doug, when he goes down to the marina, he wears his Mind Gap Podcast shirt. You can have one, too, when you go boat shopping down at the marina. Bring your AMAC box. Bring your AMAC box down to the marina on your boat named <laughs> Walter. <laughs> so, Sam, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for, for joining us, and thank you for, for saying yes to this. What have you been up to since we last talked to you on the 400th episode, which was a while ago? I'm not going to do the math. It was, well, you know what? It was 61 episodes ago, so over a I was, year. I was going to say, like, at least a year and yeah. some change. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, my work went back in person, which is great after f almost four long years of working virtually, which you would think is great, but it's not for me. Um, so back in person, full time, working a ton. Um, so because I'm working so much, I'm trying to find little pockets of things to do, like let's go to see a concert, travel, stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. I don't have too much more to report than that. Great, that was really <laughs> anticlimactic. <laughs> All right, good night. Wait, way to way to kill a ton of time for me, Sam. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait, You're welcome. So I want a, a legit question though. Like you, so you were you were you were happy that your work went full remote because a lot of companies are going back. They're saying you know return to office and we got to come back in. Well, so you're happy not that it went remote that they're doing a return to office. Well, okay. So imagine being a teacher. And you're stuck on a screen all day. It's one thing to like have work that you need to get done at your own pace. But if right. you're like chained to a laptop all day, that's just, that's not for me. So I can do it. I have done it, but it's just not my, my jam. So I prefer definitely in-person training as much as I can. Um, yeah. Other, other than that, it keeps me much more active, like working from home where you can't control your schedules, very sedentary. So it just doesn't work well with, with how 
active. I, I like to be and how active I need to be. Okay. So that's that's why I appreciate. So um, like this week I'm working from home, but that's because last week and next week I'll be there in person. So I'm, I'm getting a bit more balance, which is really nice. Okay. Uh, um, other than work, um, like I said, traveling as much as I can, um, going to visit a friend in Wisconsin in probably October, going to spend my birthday on the beach in Florida in October as well. Um, I've got a friend in Grand Rapids. That is correct. I might go visit the last half of October and see the leaves change. That is correct. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah, a bunch of little little trips like that. Nothing m- major. I would say yeah. the the biggest was, um, well, it was a work trip, but I went to Madrid for like a week. Um, so that nice. was, yeah, it was. You know, you don't have to pay for anything. That's that's nice. Um, right. <laughs> um, yeah, but other than that, I don't know what put this bee oh. in my bonnet. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear about the bees in the bonnet. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I can't recall the, the impetus or the origin of this, but I was like, I need to start seeing all, all my favorite bands that are about to kick the bucket or retire. Maybe I was looking up Paul Simon, who retired from music. He's like, no, something with his vocal cords or his doctor's like, you can't perform anymore. So, okay. And I was like, ooh, time's, t- the time, time's a ticking in the yeah. uh, sands of the hourglass. So... So I've been to, <laughs> I've been to, um, saw the stones at Soldier Field. Um, I had no plan, I had no desire, but I got free tickets to see Metallica at Soldier Field, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And they yeah. rocked. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> A pleasant surprise on that one for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Um, and then um, I saw Bruce Springsteen at the DC Washington Nationals uh, Stadium. That was killer basically a religious experience it was sure. unbelievable five hour show yeah yeah it was it was unbelievable so um i've got childish gambino who's retiring his character and he's, Unreal. he's, he's retiring see... from music altogether yeah. yeah so i'm going to see him at the united center in november okay so he said because i heard he said like i'm putting out uh the i think the way the way he phrased it was like the last two albums or the final two or something like that and i couldn't i couldn't i was like is is that uh, is that an, a retirement announcement from the music industry? Like, is he, he Childish Gambino is going away? That's what I read. I think he's going to focus on like directing, writing, acting, stuff like that. Interesting. He's, he is a person that will have no problem in whatever he does. Like if he nope. wants to hang up music for a little while, he can always come back to it. But like acting, could, directing, writing, like he is a goddamn genius. In he whatever could open he a little bakery and coffee shop in Atlanta and it, or and anywhere. It would, yeah. And it would absolutely, it would, it would be, it would go gangbusters. It would be sure. absolutely humongous. For sure. Yeah, he's, it, it's, he's the type of person that is like frustratingly amazing because you're yeah. just like I, <laughs> one person should not have this much talent. Yeah. You're in, you're incredible. Go, yeah. fuck, you're incredible. <laughs> yep. It's very, very disky. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna try. It's I, very, I, yeah, yeah. I got nothing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Try to wrap your mind around the talent in that one, dude. Yeah, that's um, gonna be cool. So wait, where's he? United Center. United Center. Yeah, that's awesome. When is that again? Uh, late November. Okay. Yeah, that's that's. And it, and then I was this close to seeing Paul McCartney, but and it was very reasonable, like 180 bucks. But I would have to fly to London to do it, and I was like, ooh, that's not so reasonable. Not so reasonable anymore. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, he'll come to that the would... come to the states. Next year. That would have been really cool. Wait, I thought he retired from uh, – didn't he do a Northwestern retirement? Tour? No. Mm-mm. That was Elton John. Yeah. That was Elton John that did that. Yeah, that's right. It's hard. It is hard to keep track of all these older musicians who's in what stage of what. Like the Stones, yeah. you don't have to worry about. They're just going to keep going. But yeah, they're, everyone yeah. else, you don't – like, yeah, it's, it's starting to get harder. Either they're stopping altogether, which, look, in fairness, they've earned it. For or, sure. you know, they're saying, well, I'm, I live in England traveling worldwide is getting real fucking hard on a, a touring schedule playing these two, three hour shows. So it makes it so they're they're it's, If they're not retiring, they're severely limiting how you can access them and see them. And that's, yeah, you've really got to start, you gotta start making moves if you want to see these, these people playing. Yeah. So uh, I was thinking this weekend going to see ELO. Uh, they're coming Do to um, United center or somewhere, but it, 
do you know the i think it's the ship of theseus where it's like you replace one board yeah. and you put another one in is it still We've the same ship it, talked about it in the show <laughs> there's like one member left it's like so and so and his elo band it's like is it still the same elo yeah i have the you, same thing. you think so if it's if there's one original member it's still the same band I don't know. That's a tough one. I would say no. I would say it is it is so and so of ELO. I think that might have been how they phrased it too. You know, like cuz I mean cuz you like like the Dave Matthews band. Right? Like at now I feel like it's Dave Matthews and his band because there's what two? I mean there's Dave Matthews, but then there's Carter the drummer and Stefan the bass player. Everyone else has been repla- either passed away or replaced. So is that, you know, still the Dave Matthews band? Like, they're playing the same songs. It sounds the same. They've updated a few, like... Here, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a throw an argument your way, and I think you're going to agree with me. If you went to see the Beatles, and it was only Paul McCartney and just three other dudes, yeah. would you feel a little ripped off? I would say that I went and saw Paul McCartney. Yes, playing, exactly. Playing the Beatles songs. But if it yes. were billed as the Beatles, you're like, this is not... I would... Yeah, I would be I would be frustrated by that <clears throat> if he went out and, and toured as the Beatles, you know. Now, if it was Paul McCartney and one of John's sons and George's son, and then Ringo was there, then I would be a little bit more like more close. Now, let me ask you this: If it what if it's Paul and Ringo? Because they're both still kicking. They're supposed to, they're both still active musically. Like if they build, if two of the four were there, at what point? It you, depends you on the still two. Call it the band, you know. It depends on the two. <laughs> Paul and John, yeah. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> You've got the wrong two. <laughs> to, to George or Ringo, yeah. but yeah, no. I. Uh, but at that point, at that point, though, like, how many? If it's one, if it's a four-person band and there's one left, we're saying no. If it's two of the four, if it's half the band, is it still the band? You know, or if it's the more American thing, like Jimi Hendrix and the Experience, like the Experience could be interchanged as long as I'm sure. seeing Jimi. Sure, I've seen Hendrix. That's exactly um, yeah. That, that's another way to go about but it. But if you but have like someone, the title, like right, like name like any Metallica. member of yeah, exactly the Metallica. Um, name any <laughs> member of Elton John's band. Like no, it's Elton John and whatever his band name is. I don't even know. Steve Carey was one of them. Sure. Lionel, uh, was it Lionel uh, Amac was another one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the Duke? So, yeah. He's the son of Walter Amac, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. He played, with, he played, <laughs> he played Triangle with Elton. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he played the Amac boxes like castanets. Yeah, like the just, most, the most royal yeah. of instruments. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, it's a, it, it is a, uh, it's a good point. Like it's, you're going to see Elton John. It's not necessarily the back in bed, but if, if the band itself, like, for example, I got my dad, uh, and I last year, I got, a, I got us tickets to see three dog night. Cause oh, nice. one of his favorite bands and he saw them in the seventies when they were in their prime, we saw it now. And like, it's, it's one dog night now. Like it's just like one original <laughs> yeah. dude, but then one dude that's been touring with him for like 20 years. So yeah. Has he has he earned, earned it. his stripes because he's been with them for like two plus decades, and then another, and then I think his son was another member of the band. So the one original member's son was in the band. So I'm like, it, it's some form of it, you know, whatever. But it's I diluted though. For I sure. didn't think we, I didn't feel like we saw Three Dog Night. I felt like we saw you know agree. one of the dudes from Three Dog Night, and they did a really good job playing the songs of yeah. the band. But I, yeah, yeah I'm like. I, I, so in this case, I would say that if over half the band, if it, if it, if the band is like, if the band is no, like the Beatles, like it's not like Jimmy and the Experience. If the band is the whole thing and it's not an individual standout with a backing band, then I would say if half the band is gone, then it's a different band. It's a different thing that you're going to see. Okay, so fifty one percent or more. Yes, accurate. All right. Exactly. <laughs> that has to be, that's got to be, a, uh, or 50%. I'll take half. Like, you don't have to have, like, George, Paul, and then, like, uh, or John, or sorry. You don't have to have Ringo and Paul and then, like, George Harrison's finger on stage. That doesn't have to be, like, 51%. <laughs> 50% is sufficient. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But, yeah, I, but I think I would 49 agree or that. less. No, no. Mm-mm. Yeah. If, if Paul comes in missing a toe, then that's not the, that's not the Beatles. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, no, no. But is is that where you agree to? Like you, I think so. I think that's yeah. I think that's where I sit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. Well, out of the ones that you've seen, what was the better? What was the best show that you saw this summer? 
Um, well, uh, they're wildly different musically, but I understand. Yeah. Um, both great in in all their own respective ways. Stones, mm. absolute professionals. I looked them up. I think they're all like between eighty one and eighty three at this point. It's incredible. They come out. They put on like a two hour show, a little bit of an encore, and they play all the hits. And the, when when they're like, all right, and the next three songs are from our new album. It's like hint hint. Go get your beers now because we're gonna play bangers for the rest of the show so <laughs> we're like thank you thank yes. you appreciate that keith and so they do that and then they just continue with hit after hit and they're like they know why everybody's here to see them they come out they delivered what people wanted and it was awesome they just hit all the right uh, nostalgic spots right um metallica was very impressive with how hard they could rock with all being like 65 at this mm-hmm. point um that was pretty cool um it was it was really interesting to see um, their all of their fans that are like you know when when you're what about what age you start to get into bands like Metallica like thirteen fourteen fifteen yeah, when you start to like yeah. angst and, and that teenage pent up rage sure. um, see there was kids like that there all the way to like seventy year olds that have been with them from the from the jump from the inception um, yes 100 percent. like the um like the leather vests with their pot bellies long hair and their bald spots like rocking out like yeah hell yeah uh, knowing all the songs and everything I'm like props you're still coming out here and giving the energy Absolutely. Um, uh even though they were my of the all the bands my least favorite my favorite um live show and probably just musically in general was uh springsteen like yeah unbelievable so well, when you call it a religious experience, yes, <laughs> I think that might indicate some of my bias. Yeah, but what about what about it was was a religious experience for you? Was it just did he sound that good? Was the band that good, or was it just um, the whole like like almost that 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 genesis? Well, you can't really put your finger on it. Just something in the air of the the vibe of the show. Yeah, all of that. So yeah. so basically, I I feel like he's a much deeper lyricist compared to the Stones. Like the Stones are, yeah, they've got some yeah. deeper songs, but they're, they're way more radio friendly than than Bruce. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I I loved some of his lyrics plus the music plus he like from the get go when he first came out as a band they were putting on four hour shows. So like they're still doing it. You know, forty five almost 50 years later. Um, insane to me. That's insane. Yeah. I don't know how his, truly don't know how his voice stands up to it after all these years. Well, okay. So, um, you know how, <laughs> when somebody gets older, the voice starts to get a little more raspy, kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. I could hear that creeping into his voice, but he was still belting it out for, you yeah. know, three plus hours. Um, and like, there's something mesmerizing and chilling and just, um, puts you into a trance when somebody is on stage with a spotlight on them and they have 65,000 people singing and doing exactly what they're telling them to do. And like the lights turn on and everybody's like doing the exact same thing. It's just, it's just magical. Yeah. I, I, I have been to, I've been to a, a good number of concerts. I don't know that I've ever been to one, the Foo Fighters would probably be the closest that I have had to something that you're describing like that. Like when, <clears throat> like it was, I think it was specifically, it was the one where Grohl was on the, th- the th- was the throne tour where he broke his oh, leg. Oh yeah. When he broke something his leg. About, yeah. Yeah. Something about that one. And I don't know if it was that one or it was the two years after that, when they came to Wrigley, uh, where Taylor Hawkins was on this drum set, uh, this platform that like rose up like 20 feet in the air. And then like rose. So like, they just had so much, uh, be, that like fed the audience and the audience was like, they all had their phones out, like with the lights on, like it was this, there was this like just energy, kinetic energy in the, yeah. in the thing. And I'm like, this is cool, man. This is re- there's something about the vibe of this tonight. Yeah. Um, I will say the, the best music, the best sounding concert I've ever been to bar none was the Eagles. Really? That, they blew me away. As in like their <laughs> musicianship I, or what? Yes. Well, it was, it was wild. Like, I don't know. And look, part of it is, is uh, kudos goes to them, and part of it goes to whoever they have on their whoever they had on that tour running their sound because you could you could look at any member of the band and pick out their instrument. Nice, like it, every instrument came through clearly, but it, they meshed like it didn't sound like one was over the other ever. But like every one, you could hear what every person was doing. If you focused in on one person, you're like, yep, there's that. Just perfectly I, balanced I between all saying. the members. Yeah, yeah, it was it was. 
incredible. And never in a, like in an album, you can do that really hard to do in an arena show. And oh, so yeah. that was, that was something special when I said, I think I was like 13, but it oh, was uh, right at that impressionable age. Yeah. 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 Where I was just like, what is happening right now? Yeah, it might've yeah. been the hell freezes over tour. I don't know. I don't know nice. what year that was. Yeah. That for me, that was BB King. I was about 13 or 15. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm at the uh, Peoria civic center. Like, it's only like a 4,000 person arena, maybe six at most, but it was like yeah. 20% filled. So we could just like, me and my brother could just go as close as we wanted. And That's incredible. He was even even old back then. He came out, sat down, <laughs> played yeah. an hour, stood up and left. <laughs> I was like, good night. <laughs> respect to that. I respect yeah. you sticking to your guns, BB. I love That's it. Got my 25 bucks worth. Thank you, BB. <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying uh, as far as like you, the audio the quality, of like, that one? Yeah, the just, musician, yeah. the audio, like, you, you know, when you hear him play Lucille and like you hear like his every single like rubbing of the strings on the frets, like because you're a guitarist Absolutely, too, like, yeah. like you can hear all of that and it was coming through just perfectly. It was just amazing. Yeah. Which I would say is, is like an aspect or an element of the blues music that gives it its, oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's war. It's, that is the DNA of, of part of the DNA of what the blues is. And that's 100%. Just, it's great that they were able to recreate that live. Cause it's yeah. not always the easiest thing to do, but man, when they get it. Yeah. Whew, it was amazing. That's, that's fucking up. That's fucking awesome. Um, not to backtrack too far, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to throw one more, uh, cause this is technically around work, but do you, and you feel free to say no, we'll pivot to something else. It's <laughs> not a big deal. But do you want to regale us with the story of the hot dog bandit? Oh gosh, how much time because, do you have? Because we control this, all right. We're we're, we're uh, we don't have any sponsors. Yeah, okay. Hint, hint. We're accepting <laughs> sponsors. Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, wish you, I'd known that the, the, the pin is over there. I'll send you yeah. a picture of the pin, and you can you can use it. Um, Amazing, okay, yeah. so you can, you can give us an abridged version, but I just think this is you want to talk about something special, like with work yes. environment. This yeah, is okay. This so, is awesome. Um, I won't name the crew, but like I, I moonlight working for a Comic-Con crew and they're, they're pretty big. Like they get, they get a listers. And yeah. so as the reason I keep going back is for a couple of years now, since 2016. Right. Yeah. So this yeah. has been a thing Almost. for you. So you're getting, yeah. you're getting in good with this crew. Yeah. Um, and I love them to death. They're amazing. Um, just love their vibe, their energy. They bring such great enthusiasm and like just fun just fun to be around they create a fun environment and so this was like two years in the making um if anybody's familiar with community um and is it the butt crack bandit with the quarters yes yeah or something to that effect but yeah something that yeah uh the, the one of the staff members we don't know who uh took a page from their book and basically when you work a con you know there's tens of thousands of people so you're always like walking around with the radio in your ear you find weird things there's a lost kid you take him to lost and found um so you have no idea what's going to crop up. And like somebody finds a hot dog, just a cooked um, n- naked hot dog, no bun, no mustard, nothing, just a, just a hot dog. And there's a, a three by five uh, note card with a thumbtack pinned to it. And it was like, uh, I forget ex- exactly what it said, but it's something, something like, um, I am the darkness. I am the dog. I am the hot dog bandit. I'm coming for you or something like that. And we're like, what? (laughs) Like, what is going on? And it was such insanity. We're like, we just chalked it up to like insane stuff. You find at a, at a con. We're like, cause people dress up, they do weird stuff to like go viral. It's a bizarre, it's a bizarre environment. Yeah. Yeah. So 30 minutes go by. Somebody finds another one with a new note, another 30 minutes. Somebody finds one in their purse. Somebody finds one like in the staff office, which is behind like security, um, like buried in a, um, a big box of like lanyards, like you're like going through and you're like, Oh my God. And they all have different notes pinned to them. And each note is like a serial killer descending into madness. They would get more and more bizarre, <laughs> like to the point of it's like, I am hot dog. I am death or something. I am become hot dog. Um, <laughs> and, and this was, this was just on Friday. Okay. And the con is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Saturday, uh, <laughs> the next day, no hot dogs anywhere. We're like, okay, whatever. That was just somebody yeah. having some fun. Um, and the con ends at like five or six, and then they have panels all night. So like there's Harry Potter panels. There's all these other panels. Right. Um, and mm. they're like halfway through, let's say it's Harry Potter. And this is a, a ballroom with like 300 people in it, sitting down, watching this panel, interacting. And halfway through this hour-long panel, 
somebody stands, an audience member stands up and they go, I've been instructed to tell everybody to look under your seats and then runs out of the room. And we're like, that's wait. terrifying. First off, first off. Yes. Yeah. And we're like, wait, what? And we start to look under a seat and people duct taped hot dogs under every chair, hundreds of hot dogs. And, and the crew who are aware were like, what is going on? Like, oh my God, we've been dogged. We've been dogged. And the audience members are like, is this part of the panel? What's going on? This is weird. <laughs> so we don't explain anything. We're like, whatever, just go on. Um, Saturday. Then Sunday. Well, Parkium Leviosa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Frank Furturius. Um, <laughs> Sunday, no dogs. And again, we wrap up Comic Con. We go to like this nice sit down dinner. And lo and behold, everybody's sitting down to eat. Like nice plated, like servers with like nice white button down shirts and like the folded down aprons and stuff. Yeah. Um, everybody sits down and they unfold their silverware. Hot dogs fall out. Everybody's silverware was wrapped up with hot dogs. This is, I, uh, hearing it for the second time is <laughs> as good as hearing it for the first time. It's insane. It's insane. So that was, uh, I, f- I believe fast okay. forward, like six months. We're like, Oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Right. Um, and so, um, <laughs> uh, nothing happens all weekend, nothing. And then we were at a wrap up party on Sunday after the con, like pizza, beer, just hanging out with friends. Um, and there's like 40 of us in this room and yeah. everybody knows everybody and everybody's phone just bloop, lights up at the same time with a big mass text from everybody's known number. And then one is an unknown number. It's like, did you miss me? And we're like, who is this? Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And like a couple minutes go by, we get another number or another text from the unknown number saying, how about you come down to the lobby? I have a gift for you. I can't wait to catch up. It's like, okay. <laughs> This is such a bad pun. Yeah. The level of dedication, though, oh, like yeah, to this, yeah. is is uh, unreal. Uh, go down, uh, get get to this box, bring it up, open it up, and there's uh, like a birthday card of like a hot yeah. dog, like a hot dog shaped birthday card. And you open it up, and there's two Polaroid pictures. One is, looks like a pirate's chest, and one looks like a boxer's robe that they wear into the uh, ring. And on the back, yeah. it says "Hot Dog Bandit." And we turn the Polaroids over and there's like a string of numbers. And so we, we had to Google like, what does this mean? Like a string of numbers on, a, on the back of a Polaroid. It doesn't tell you where it's taken, but it tells you when it was taken. These were like oh, okay. 18 months old. They've, had, they've been sitting on this for like 18 months. <laughs> the level of, of dedication, dedication to this is, fucking bit is amazing. Yes, it's, it's great. And, and then it said like, um, I'll see you all in... And like that was the end of the text thread. Yeah. And we looked it up, and it was like a Las Vegas number. Nobody lives in Las Vegas, so somebody went to the 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 point of getting a burner phone to pay for a burner phone to have it sent to everybody. And so, fast forward to to, and um, <laughs> again, nothing happens all weekend. And we're like, well, maybe they. Maybe it was a crew member that couldn't make it this time. Maybe it's somebody. Right. Um, maybe they, they went had to, bankrupt. Maybe they went bankrupt <laughs> buying all of these hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> long story short, we play this game called it's called Werewolf, but it's like a party game, like a like yeah. an improv style party game. Um, and they were like, you know, the hot dog bandits in this room. We're going to reveal who this person is. And as we're playing the game. The hotel, we're in a hotel suite, the door gets busted open and two people wearing hot dog bandit um, robes with masks on. Like, do you remember at the end of Deadpool, he takes off his uh, Deadpool mask and it's Hugh Jackman? Yep. Yeah, they've, right. got like, they've got like hot dog bandit masks like that on their face. And they bust in and just start like chucking hot dogs at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, God, we're getting dogged, we're getting dogged. And they they're running around, it's chaos, and they're just running around, just chucking them everywhere. <laughs> and in the confusion, they make their way out of the suite, and we're like, "What is going on?" Unreal. And long story short, it was a it, it was a straight up Scooby Doo, like the old man who ran the the rundown uh, abandoned amusement park. Sure, yeah. It was our accountant who was like the it's quiet, the accountant. mild-mannered accountant who was just like, no, I had money and nothing else to do. I was like, why not? This seems like fun. And so... <laughs> money and nothing else to do. <laughs> so he spent like two years of his life right, 
Also, that uh, the the organization uh, is now uh, bankrupt. Yes, that too. <laughs> that I had too. money because I had access to all of our bank accounts. <laughs> so, so you took two fucking years to set this up. And he even made like a pamphlet, like a photo collage pamphlet of over the years that we all have a pamphlet. We all have a pin. Did I send you the pin of like the little hot dog bandit? You, you sent me the, the, the picture. picture of it, yeah. yeah. Um, one of those. Um, and he's like, honestly, I'm just glad it it's over. I was so stressed the whole time, but it was like, dude, yeah. like I roomed with him like four times. I was like, bravo, man. I had no clue. I had no clue. The job I'm well just done. Looking to see if I can find. I know you sent it to me. I gotta see. Oh, here. Okay, so I've got. Well, no, I don't want to do this because I don't want to see. Here, I'll I'll uh, I'll zoom in so you don't see anyone's face. But you can see. Oh yeah. So anyone watching YouTube right now, you can see this is the hot dog, uh, the hot dog bandit robe that was running around chucking, chucking things at people. Um, and I know. Yeah, here we go. This is the. So that is the hot dog, the hot dog bandit pin. It's like it's Morty, isn't it? From Rick and Morty. It, it looks like Morty, looks but he, like, he's yeah. got like an eye patch and a and like an evil mustache. Yeah. So there's that is the that's yeah. the hot dog bandit pin. And pin that's the photo the, uh, photo collage. The, yeah, the photo collage. This, my good god, dude, my good god. If I one had the idea to do anything like this, two had the 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 gumption, the um stick to itiveness I don't even know just yeah. to keep keep going and just not tell anybody the level of co- I honestly I know we keep saying it but like Jake genuinely if you're listening to this <laughs> genuinely think about the <laughs> level of commitment that it takes to pull off everything you just heard over the course of two fucking years well here's the thing the the head security guy knew He's like, all you have to do is give me access to everything and don't say a word. He's like, done. I, I don't, I don't care, um, because like great security guy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> just okay. <laughs> I can't tell you why I need it, but I just need you to give me access to anything and don't tell anyone what I'm doing. Got uh, it. Well, I mean, he's the money guy, so <laughs> eh, whatever. Um, because we're like, you know what? If he did pull this off alone, like we need to check his freezer because that is some diabolical. Oh, he is level for sure a super intellect. Villain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. So, but again, the, the burner phone I think is the one that kills me. I oh, I love it so it, much. It's, it's the burner phone. The two the two details of this that I cannot get over is the burner phone number one and number two is the fucking hundreds of hot dogs under every chair in a panel. Yeah. that is next level. Yeah, it took bananas. him like like two hours because there was like 200, 300 chairs in that panel. Right, and how did he? How did he have the like? Just to find the the window of time to do that and to not have Get no caught. one walking no one on walked you, through. yeah, yeah, that's just it's it's insane to me. Mm-hmm. And also, kudos to the person who had the balls to stand up and go, "I've been instructed to." And like at that point, <laughs> there's he easily could have gotten tased, right? Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, just, look under your chairs, ah! And then he runs out like that. I would have been fucking shitting my pants if that was the case. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. not. Eh, that's the Absolutely. fun they bring. That's the fun they make there. That's, the that's fun why. They bring. That's, that's why I enjoy it. <laughs> Unfucking real. Um. Uh, on that note, if you want to talk about bringing some fun, Sam, do you want to play a game? Yeah, you were going to ask me a question two fifty three, right? Yeah, what's the funniest work experience you ever had? Oh, okay, done. That Next. question basically made the podcast today. Oh, okay, <laughs> we gotcha. Didn't get to the, we did not do the time. I mean, we said, you know, tell me about the concert you've been to was one of the topics, but like everything else, fuck it. That was enough. It was amazing. Done. That was amazing. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to jump into the game for this week, which is the same one we played last week with Doug. It's the new one we're playing. It's called Three and Six. Uh, so Sam, I am going to give you, I'm going to say, List three blank, three things, and I'm going to give you a, a category, a, a thing that you have to give me three things that relate to this category in six seconds. Okay. Okay. Now, just to make things a little bit more pressure filled for you, you're going to have that <laughs> running in the background. Okay. For six seconds until the time, and that's how you know the time is out. Okay. Got it. To clarify, like I did for Doug last week, because I tested this game out with Hague. And I, I gave him, I said, I said it and I started the clock and he's like, wait, do you mean like, and I said, no, 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 you're on the clock. 
and that ate up four seconds of his six. So he fucked that. That question was done. So there's no uh, you. You basically just have to. What do you think I mean by it? If there's clarification, too bad. Take a guess and just run run forward. Okay. So if you say like mm-hmm. name name three flowers, I could be like white wheat, and he's like no no, but doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that so in that case you would be wrong. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so just, just, you know, whatever you, uh, so like in, in, it's, this is not one that you're going to get, but it was name three, uh, um, name three, uh, uh, alcoholic drinks, beer, liquor, wine. Right. And he was like, well, do you mean like cocktails or do you mean <laughs> like this? And I was like, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, like if you, if you do good, I might just judge his rule. I might just give it to you. Right, so, right, right. You know, cool. Yeah. I'm on board. Um, so yeah. So, all right, here we go. So we're going to play. Quick Three question. and six. Yes. How many questions are we going to have? Three. Gotcha. Yes. And hopefully we can do this in under six minutes. Because <laughs> then we're really sticking to three and six. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. There's three questions because uh, I don't want to make it too crazy for you. Uh, but I will start. Um, I'm going to do my best to start easy. Okay. And then go a little bit harder. Okay. Or at least what I feel would be easy for you in, into harder. So, Sam. Your first three and six, the timer starts as soon as I get done asking the question. List three villains from the Star Wars series. Vader, Palpatine. Oh, Darth Moon Monroe. Oh, no. I didn't get that last one in time. No, crowd says you fucked that up. What was the last one you said? I think I said Monroe, but it's not Monroe. It's... I was like, I don't. Is was it Amac? No. Are you thinking Walter Amac? <laughs> Monroe. Yes. I don't. What are you talking about? No, Monroe? it's it's it doesn't matter. From which uh, movie or TV show or whatever? Um, he was technically in the Acolyte, but it, it, I think I think I was thinking of his species, which is like Monroe or Monroe, Maroon, something like that. Not oh, his actual Darth name. He's Villain Darth Darth the... Darth um, Plagueis is. Lord. Uh, Star Wars Acolyte Episode 5. Who's the masked Sith? Is it uh, Kimir? Kills Yord and Jackie. Is that uh, Darth Jar Jar? Yeah. <laughs> May, Darth Plagueis, Darth Tenenbaumus. Uh, who's the creepy guy in Acolyte? Darth Plagueis? No. Someone no. Else? I, don't know, I still haven't watched. Acolyte, he looks like so he looks a lot like Voldemort. He villain and acolyte that looks like Voldemort. The identity of the main villain and acolyte is that the main? Was they the? Were they no, the it villain? wasn't the main villain. He was like literally on screen for six seconds at most. Oh, cool. Then I'm not going to continue yeah, this. Yeah, don't. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. Wow, I did not think that uh, that one was going to get. Uh, it's gonna be a miss. I'm gonna assume, I know okay. I had analysis paralysis. I was like, "Oh, what about the extended?" Uh, yeah. Yep. So Doug and I do that all the time when it comes to. There's another game that we play where he will. Uh, uh, well, there's uh, multiple games that this has happened, but like where you know it, but your you have your brain either locks into one thing and you can't think of any. Like your brain is just your brain yeah. gets tunnel vision more or less, or like you said, analysis paralysis is a great way of putting it, where you're. You're you've got so much to choose from that your brain is like I don't know where to start. Like it's yeah exactly. I feel like a squirrel crossing the street as a car bears down on me. Like, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent, hundred percent. Okay, cool. Well then, let's uh, these next ones should be super easy. Hell, Ooh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Sam, name three animals that lay eggs. Platypus, duck, goose. I feel like oh I could have gone for more, but okay. Give me more. What else you got? Um, no, I can't. You put me on the spot like this. Well, oh, that's geez. the thing. I was like, if you said birds, birds, I technically yeah, would have accepted that. But you said, you know, goose. You said duck. I mean, yeah. But any amphibian, frogs, turtles, any, that's alligators, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fish, uh, insects, most most of them lay, creatures, all of them, yeah. <laughs> Many creatures lay eggs. Yeah. Uh, so Sam, yeah, you got that one. I'm gonna give you the kids on that. Yay! Good job. And then a quick fart. Um, all right. So 
Sam, last one. You're you're one for uh you're yeah, you're 50-50. But nope, that's not you're betting 500. Um sports. <clears throat> Sam. <laughs> wow, I blacked out. Uh name three countries that start with the letter C. Canada, Cameroon, Croatia. This guy right here. I'm not even gonna end it like that. You just this guy, yes. <laughs> Absolutely well done. Sam, well done. Not to brag, but geology is kind of my jam. See, there you go. I had another one that I almost gave you, which oh, I see. I remember. Fuck. Throw it on. You want to try one more? Throw it on. Why not? Froggish. You feel like you lay eggs? <laughs> <laughs> you feeling froggish? Then let's leap. Here we go. Sam. <clears throat> Crap. Hold on. <laughs> Where'd it go? I want to make sure I get the phrasing right so it's not, uh, you know what I mean? Or, I, or maybe I should just go out on a high note. Hey, look, it's your call. I'm happy to give it to you if you want it. Meh, your call. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. We're, we're going let's forward. Let's we're roll the dice. One because I, I love, yeah, let's roll the dice, man. Uh, I'm going to put it on here so I know that I used it. Um, okay. Samuel, list three countries that border France. Belgium, Spain, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, Luxembourg. (laughs) Sure, you got it. You doubled up on that. You didn't need six, Sam. You fucking show up. Uh, Yeah, Belgium, Germany, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Italy, uh, Monaco, Andorra, Spain. Nice. Uh, France also has a maritime border with the United Kingdom to the northwest. Oh. So you could have said that. You'd have been right, too. God damn, baby. (laughs) Three of four. Beat that. That's the one to beat. You, I believe, now hold the record. I think that's the one to beat now. So that is awesome. Well done, Sam. Well done. You have earned the right to uh, kick us off for uh recommendations what have you been watching reading what uh what sounds good to you what have you been cooking uh is there a new liquor that you're trying what do you want to what do you want to recommend out here? there is a liquor called that i i discovered years ago and then completely forgot about i walked past it in the store and i was like whoa it is a french whiskey that is um aged in sherry barrels it's called bren b-r-e-n-n-e okay um unbelievable and not too bad, like 70 bucks, something like that. Maybe 85 depending on where you shop. Okay. Um, unbelievably good. It's a true, like, sipper. Like, you just want to pour, like, a quarter ounce, half an ounce, and just, like, just slowly take your time. Um, as far as watching, uh, I cannot recommend highly enough FX, Hulu, uh, Shogun. Um, they basically – I, I love this show. It's If you like Game of Thrones, you like, um, like – political machinations plus like sex and violence um this is all of that with a lot of um real historical accuracy to it so they changed a couple names and locations but other than that they they said that they basically fit in a four-year degree in feudal japan into a 10-hour series and it's all for the most part historically accurate Jesus, that's incredible. I also heard and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if you heard this too that they went through some process of taking their the script that they wrote, they had it translated yes. into Japanese, and then they had it translated from Japanese back into English. So it's actually more complicated than that. Tell me, yeah, so, please. So it takes place in like 13, 1400s. Okay. It's like 1400 or 50 something. Um, so way, way, way back. It was the equivalent of taking an English script, translating it to Japanese, translating it to like Shakespearean version of Japanese and then back to modern day Japanese and then back to English. So Jesus. Yeah. It was, imagine if, uh, if a Japanese writer did that for like um, middle ages, England, they'd have to go from Japanese to English, English to Shakespearean, back to English, back to Japanese. So that's what they did. So in the show, the actors are actually speaking their feudal Japanese equivalent of like our Shakespearean English. It's so, it's so cool. Why and I, this might just be my stupid brain. Why did you need to translate it, retranslate it back? Why did you need to come back up the inception pole? Uh, double, triple, quadruple checking for accuracy. Dig it. Cool. Make sure nothing was lost in translation. No yep. pun intended. Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I dig it. Very cool. Shoga, I've been wanting to after it cleaned up at the Emmys. I've been wanting to uh, to check it out. So that uh, 
that is on on officially on my queue now. Thanks nice. to you. Now the whiskey we're talking about, would you say that is on ice or would you say that's neat? Um, maybe like an ice chip. It depends on how you like it. So Just you could do, open you, up the, uh, you, the you could body do neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not okay. like a full ice cube. Not even like right. an, maybe a stone. That might be good. Ooh, okay. All right, all right. I like this. I like this. I'm going to recommend, I just watched this today. I'm a few years late to the party, but uh, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. So it's the one where Tom oh, wait. Hanks... Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking the actual series. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you watched the, the series whole, of Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. The whole Mr. Rogers series oh, oh, yeah, I watched from the, the entire, 1970s PBS. You got it today. <laughs> all all day. something seasons years. of it, and I got nothing done. <laughs> Yeah, um, I watched it in 10x. No, it's. <laughs> I don't want to brag, but I, I'm kind of a genius. Uh, it's the one where Tom Hanks plays uh, Mr. Rogers, nice. and uh, it's uh, it follows the uh, the gentleman who wrote the um, an article. Uh, Lloyd Vogel uh, was an investigative journalist, and he was sent to write just a puff, uh, just a little snippet of a piece that they were doing. Esquire was doing a whole thing on uh, American heroes, and uh, they were going to feature him. He was a very cynical writer, and he uh, linked up with Rogers and ended up following him for a long time. They became friends. Uh, he wrote 10,000-plus words on him, and wow. it became the cover story. So uh, – and they're, I guess they were still friends, uh, I think, to you know to the end of, uh, of Mr. Wow. Rogers' life. So um, it was a, a really, really good movie. It's got a 95% in Rotten Tomatoes. I rated it four and a half stars in Letterboxd. It was – like I, it, I, got, I walked away with it. The way that the director – the writers wrote it and the director uh, showed it to us was just, um, I don't know. It was just, it was really beautiful. Like yeah. it, they showed us Lloyd's journey uh, as if it was through the lens of the show of Mr. Rogers and like okay. the kindness that, that he needed to kind of come over, overcome whatever he had in his life. Uh, just a really, just a really cool fucking movie. Uh, a feel good. I, I came out of it going, I feel better about humanity and i think that was the genuine uh that is the that to credit to fred rogers himself oh, i yeah. think just his like tom hanks embodying that persona that persona still came through with the same love and kindness and genuine just a good human being you know and, like it's you what a unique individual i'll say fred rogers was so oh, yeah just just i don't don't think there's many there have been many like him, um, but I love the fact that uh, and there's one line in the movie where uh, the journalist is talking to Fred's uh, wife, and she said, he's no, he said, you know, how's it married, feel to be married to a saint? She's like, I don't like that. She goes, it makes, I, I never like it when people use that word because it makes what he does seem unattainable. Mm. And it is attainable. You can be not. He's a, she goes, he works on it every day. He's yeah. got a temper and he this and this, but he gets he chooses how that temper affects him mm -hmm. you know and so it's like yeah. it's it's a conscious choice to be kind and yeah. i'm like that's i just feel like in today's day and age we need more of that so <laughs> yeah. please go do yourself a favor and watch a beautiful day in the neighborhood and just you know have a healthy cry and it's okay, okay. <laughs> it's okay to not be okay mind get podcast said that <laughs> first we coined it whatever sam uh, is there any place uh, where people can you don't you're not on social media so this is a waste of no plug, sir right? yeah cool so unlike plug Sam, yourself yeah mind gap podcast uh, you can find us on all social medias um, at mind gap podcast uh, like we said earlier join our discord we would love you to to join the community there and talk to everyone that we've got on there uh, YouTube subscribe uh, find an episode that you like just. Give a like on that episode and put a comment. Say, you know, you know, comment like we've been asking you because when you like, when you comment, when you subscribe, all those things help us that it pleases the algorithm, the algorithmic gods, and it moves <laughs> us up the, uh, the the ladder. So anything you can do in that regard is very, very appreciated. Uh, Redbubble.com slash podcast. You can buy merch there if you would like. We would love it if you rocked it out like Doug does when he goes and buys boats. Uh, and then mm – -hmm. uh, Justin, you can follow me. Uh, I see Doug usually does that and kicks it to me, so I'm having to do both parts now. Uh, on Instagram, I'm uh, at Justin underscore Michael. Good God, I'm having, I'm struggling, Sam. At Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And, uh, you know, follow it's me okay. on there. It's a, it's a good time. It's okay what to struggle. It? It's okay it to struggle. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, and then while you're in the online realm, like I said, anywhere where you can consume audio podcasts, we're there as well. Do the same thing as YouTube. Share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. The big one is sharing. Let people know that we're out there. And then TuiStaith.com, TuiStaith on all social media. Loveandimprovfilm.com, Love film on Instagram. And with that, I will say, Samuel, thank you. Justin, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Thank you.